Hello everyone, I am back at it with more interesting car facts, this time 100. The original was 20, then it was 50. I told you guys it would be 100, it is 100 now. This one is going to be a longer video because it's 100 facts. It's going to be around 50 minutes, so grab a drink, grab a snack, grab someone if you'd like to. And please enjoy everyone, thank you for watching so much, I really appreciate it. The Drift Yosemite surprisingly has pretty good handling for being a purpose-built drift car. Now it is unique in terms of handling. It doesn't have good handling like the BR8 or a F1 car. It has good handling but you kind of have to catch it in a turn. It is still good though. The Peyote Gasser is obviously a drag built Peyote, but it's meant to be more of a resto mod, not really an original. And as you can see here, the interior is, you know, an interior. It's pretty old, nothing special in terms of interior. Um, you see this a lot in older cars, but it is what it is. It does have carbon drag seats, however. While this is a resto mod rebuilt car, the original Peyote and this one have the same exact interior, aside from the carbon bucket seats. I mentioned this in a previous video, but it's still good, so I'll bring it back here. There are two different types of chromes in the game. There is the chrome that the stock wheels have on some cars, and there is the chrome that we get on the chrome wheels. The chrome that comes by default on these cars with these wheels cannot be achieved, and it does have a slightly more shiny look to them, which I personally really like. I'm not sure why Rockstar did this, because... I think for game reasons, it would be easier to just have one type of chrome because then it doesn't have to get mixed up with the other one, but Rockstar is Rockstar. On Arena War cards, you can equip Nitrous, and I'm pretty sure most people know that, but did you know that while you reverse and use Nitrous, it doesn't slow you down whatsoever, you go the same exact speed. Because it does apply so much torque when you are going forward, I would at least expect some sort of pushback when you are reversing, but there is none. Please excuse me if I'm being ignorant, I'm not too educated in terms of NASCAR and how their cars function, but the Haring Hellfire and in fact all the other Haring cars have no grill, it's just a sticker. But they still have an engine that needs to get cooled off by air, so how does air get to the engine? Now I will say there are vents on the bottom that I'm pretty sure are functional, but it's not that much, and wouldn't they want as much air going into the engine as possible? But once again, I'm not too sure, maybe I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Similar to the Rattel and its functional opening valve exhaust, the Haring Hellfire actually has an animation on the roof. It's these air brakes that deploy every time you hit the brakes over a certain speed, and I think it's really cool. Just a reminder that this is only possible on next generation consoles because of the higher FPS. If this was ran on the Xbox One or PS4, this would probably make your game go down like 10 frames per second. The Astron, as well as many other cars, has a completely unique wheel design, and these designs are unique to the cars usually and are not sold separately on other cars. However, some of these are in the street and track category. Some of those wheels come from previously existing cars, but most of them do not. And it's a shame because these wheels are very nice looking and we likely will never get them on cars that were not the original car at least. However, you never know because once again, Rockstar is Rockstar and they may just reuse assets for a new wheel category, which I personally probably won't be even mad about. Most wheels have zero physical properties and have zero collision as well. Now stick with me here because this is a long one, but the Hot Ring Hellfire is the most recent Hot Ring car, the Evron is the second most recent, and the Hot Ring Sabre is the oldest out of the three. The Hot Ring Sabre is number 45, and the Hot Ring Evron is number 46, and the Hot Ring Hellfire is number 44, but it is the most recent Hot Ring car to release. 
So shouldn't it have been number 47 to follow along? Because why would this be a previous number if it is the most recent card to release? Shouldn't the Saber have the lowest number out of the three and then go up from there? I'm not too sure. Let me know what you guys think. There is a strange bug sometimes when calling the mechanic in certain spots of the map that for some reason just completely give you an error when requesting a car. A lot of Mercedes-based models in the game have a V12 badge on the side of them. For example, the dubstep also has this same badge. However, when you pop the hood on these cars, they do not absolutely have a V12. To me, it looks like a pretty low pixel V8. The Sanctus is the only motorcycle in the game to by default come with colored headlights. The Sanctus also has a unique exhaust animation. The Ruiner ZZ8 comes with an optional T-Top, which is obviously glass and glass can break. So if you shoot out the glass, it still retains the physical properties of a hard top when you throw something on it. For example, a grenade. Some of you might know this one already, but I only found out very recently that you can actually lower and raise the roof of a convertible car in the interaction menu. This had to have been added in at least the previous three updates because I don't remember this being in the game for very long. The Brutus is an arena ready vehicle that you can kind of just make crazy and have crazy spears on it and a ram or you can do none of that and turn it into a pretty low key off roader. Whenever I go off roading with friends this is definitely a car I pull out because they're like what the hell is that thing they have no idea this is just a Brutus without all the crazy mods on it. The Brutus also has a tentable front windshield, which not a lot of cars do. I believe only two other supercars have the capability to do this, that being the Vision and the Tesseract. The Honey S is obviously based on some sort of Bentley SUV, but it was released in 2013, back when Bentley didn't yet release the Bentayga. So did Rockstar have the hindsight to foresee a Bentley SUV? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they saw a Bentley Bentayga concept or a Bentley SUV concept and they decided to mix and match it and put it into GTA Online. Regardless of what they did, the Honey S is the result. The Infernus has a pretty decent looking interior with stitching that I'm pretty sure matches the primary color of the car, but it used to be all red. I actually really prefer this interior, but back when Rockstar initially made GTA Online for next generation consoles, they updated it. With the use of a speed glitch, the Pariah used to be probably the fastest car in the game. Basically, you, all you had to do is pop the two front wheels, do a burnout, and you would be able to go across the map in literally minutes. Probably a minute flat now that I'm thinking about it. But unfortunately, this glitch was patched out and you cannot do it anymore. Some cars, particularly in the showrooms, come with black wheels by default. However, if you change the wheel to a different one and go back to stock wheels, they will go back to being alloy. So if you have a car with these wheels, unless you really like the wheel you want to change it to, don't do it because you will not be able to get it back. The Virtue, along with some other cars, has vents on the inside that makes it look like it's lit up. I'm not sure if it's just reflective or anything, but if Rockstar could pull off this look in this car, why couldn't they do it in the Jubilee, which is based off the Rolls-Royce Conan that is famous for having the Starlight Headliner? I think that would be really cool, but unfortunately, we never got it. This car has probably the smallest displacement V12 I've ever seen.
It also has a pretty strange door opening animation. The Stinger is a soft top and usually soft tops are convertibles, however this is not. It makes no sense, you can't do it in the interaction menu, you cannot do it by holding down right in the d-pad, I'm not sure what it is on other consoles. The only way you could do it is by taking it to Los Angeles Customs and taking the roof off there, which is incredibly annoying. The Thrax has a French flag on it, which makes sense because Bugatti is a French brand. And right here it is the in the correct order, blue, white, and red. And on the other side, it is in red, white, and blue. Proper flag etiquette in the US at least is to have the flag position in the highest place of honor. So on a car, that is the front. So the stars will always be facing the front of a car. That's why in real life, whenever you see Jeep Grand Wagoneers, the stars are facing the front of the car, even if it looks backwards. So shouldn't it be blue, white, and red on the other side still? Because at least in the US, that is proper flag etiquette. But let me know, maybe in France, it is different. A lot of cars have a start button, so whenever you get inside of them, you, you know, press the start button to start the car. However, there is no special animation for any car that has this button, and you turn the key in the ignition just like a traditional car. Now this one is more of a personal fact, but the highest speed I've ever achieved in a land vehicle is in the RE7B. This is because the RE7B used to have a speed glitch back when it came out as part of cunning stunts, and you would go incredibly fast when going downhill and it was incredibly easy to do and a lot of people did it. And I still to this day have never gone faster than that. A lot of engines in rear engine cars have zero collision whatsoever. The ETR1 is supposed to be, at least, based on the Lexus LFA. However, Rockstar took some creative liberties, and in doing so, kind of mimicked the headlight look of the Bugatti Chiron. The X80 Proto has a wing called the GT Wing, which already costs a lot of money in and of itself. However, you can pay an extra $10,000 to add two little pieces on the end of this wing, making it the enhanced GT Wing. Ooh. The Comet Retro Custom is probably a prime example of Rockstar adding in a car that was heavily influenced by the players of GTA Online. I say this because in a fan-made trailer dubbed Tuners and Outlaws made by GTA Wise Guy, it's a very well-known trailer, he had a wide-body Comet in the trailer and everybody wanted it and Rockstar actually added that car but just the older version, which I'm fine with. On any car that has a transparent hood, you can pop the hood and break it off. But when it breaks off, it kind of just disintegrates and it goes invisible. But it is still there. We know this because if you shoot it, it moves and you can see the bullet moving on the ground. It's quite funny. The Zion has a roll cage option that when installed actually changes the engine as well, making it a twin turbo model. This is how it looks without it. And this is how it looks with the roll cage installed. The Armored Pentagon is the only car in the game that you cannot buy on any website. It has to be unlocked by completing all original casino missions as a leader. You are then gifted it at the docks by Agatha Baker. The Drift Tampa is a pretty muscle looking car to me. This being said, this is in the sports category, which I personally think is a huge mistake. This should be a muscle car because how cool would it be seeing this car pop a wheelie? Rockstar probably did this because it is very low to the ground for a muscle car, but who cares? You can cleanly destroy all windows on a car by driving over a C4 and then detonating it. This can obviously only be done with armored cars because that's the only way to survive the explosion. But once it's done, it does look pretty cool.
you can hold a grenade in your hand and pull the pin and hold it until it blows up an armored car yet you will not die your arm will not get blown off nothing will happen The Kanjali has a livery called Galaxy. This was only available during Christmas of 2017 and is extremely rare now. However, this didn't stop glitchers by putting it on different cars, which I actually think looks pretty cool, but it is strange that the Kanjali was the originator of this livery. The T20 has Active Arrow on it. However, this being said, this does not affect performance at all and does not give you any benefit. However, in some cars it does, and it's quite strange that they pick and choose which cars get this benefit because all of them have the arrow, the Active Arrow spoiler, but it is strange. The Neo at the time of recording this video is the only car to be under the Visser or Visser brand. Maybe this will change as more updates come out though. When the Divesti A first leaked, people thought that the back were actually thrusters on it, like jet thrusters, similar to the Vigilante. However, now that we have it, we now understand that it's just a pretty dramatic looking exhaust, but it would have been cool to have jet boosters on it. Any car that has flush door handles, that is, the door handle is completely equal to the car, does not pop out at all, does not have unique animation, and you still open it as if it was popped out. The Zeruso has taillights, although it is based on a different car that mimicked the look of the Bugatti Devo's taillights. This livery on the Omnis has sponsors on it, and in these sponsors is Fuica and Long Bank, both of which are banks. So why would they let two bank brands on a sponsored car on the same livery? This would be like in real life if Chick-fil-A and Raising Cane's Chicken were on the same livery of a car. It's kind of contradictory because who do you want to sell chicken? Cane's or Chick-fil-A? I'm not too sure. It is very strange nonetheless. Cars that have a hood with no engine in them are classified as a trunk. Therefore, when you drive, the trunk or hood does not fly off. Even though the aerodynamics are still the same, it is still a body panel that's going against the air, but it will not go fly off no matter how fast you go. Here's a car with a traditional hood, for example. The Brioso 300 wide body has probably the biggest intercooler I've ever seen in my life. The La Curese has a special taillight. That is because it illuminates and flashes pretty much all the time. If you're in the car, it will do this no matter if it is daytime or nighttime, which I think is pretty cool. The Issy Rally is classified as an SUV, even though it's more of a hot hatch. However, there is no hot hatch category in GTA Online. I do get that they classified it as SUV, but me personally, I probably would have classified it as sports or off-road because it's more of a crossover, if anything. You sit incredibly low in the Spectre. There are no visible body gaps or body panels on the Spectre as well. And a side effect of this is you cannot open any other door besides the front and the passenger door, which is incredibly stupid because this obviously has an engine and it obviously has a trunk. So why not let us open it? Similar to the Astron in my first video, the Bestia GTS has a shelf in the back that bullets just pierce right through. It has zero collision whatsoever. The 770 has a pretty unique looking engine bay because it has a lot of plastic panels covering a lot of components, which in and of itself is not really rare. In real life, you even see this a lot. Automakers try to hide the ugly parts of an engine just so the average consumer thinks, oh, my engine looks so beautiful. But under that is a lot of cables and whatnot. But here, it actually looks like a wall. It's not even like a covers, which is very strange. 
The Revolter in the game is classified as a Ubermacht, which in the game is BMW, but to me it has distinctive Cadillac styling, the biggest being the two vertical taillights in the back, Cadillac is famous for this now, they do it on pretty much every one of their cars, but why is it a BMW in the game? Shouldn't it be an Albany, which is Cadillac in the game? I'm not too sure. The shafter long wheelbase is classified as a sports car, but the Cognoceni is classified as a sedan, but the proportions are pretty similar, they're pretty much the same length, the same width, and they're based off of the same car as far as I'm concerned, the Mercedes S-Class, so why are they in different categories? If you put the top down in a convertible while having the trunk open, it will close in a pretty hilarious fashion. It kind of just slams down, which can't be good for the hinges. It also speeds up the process quite a bit, which is a strange byproduct. You can change the name of Arena War cars, but only Arena War cars. I think a great feature to add would be to allow us to change the name on all cars because this would just be an incredible feature even for car guys, for everyone. I'm pretty sure everyone would appreciate it. And this feature is in the game already. It's already coded. It's already a thing, but it's only on select cars. So Rockstar, please give us this for all cars. When the Ardent first came out, people thought it would be able to go underwater because a previously leaked submarine car had been able to go underwater, so we thought this was it. However, it was not it and later released the Stromberg, which is the actual car that can go underwater. And they do look kind of similar at a glance, but overall, they don't look that similar and I'm pretty sure uh, we were just in over our heads. This one was a pretty hot topic in my last video, but the Weevil Custom has off-road modifications that you can put on it. And I was saying how, why, why did they have this on this car? If you cannot lift it, we should be able to lift it. And people were like, well, just because it's on it doesn't mean you have to put it on. I get that, but it's still on the car. So if someone wanted to go off-roading in this, they can't really do it because this car is too low. I get now that this is a drag car, not really an off-road car. So why have the off-road modifications in the first place? The barrage has a grenade launcher in the back. When you shoot it, however, the grenade pellets don't actually go down. They stay the same and they don't get depleted whatsoever. We have many F1 cars in the game, two of which are older, but two of which are newer. The newer ones lack the halo, which is now famous for saving multiple lives during multiple crashes in F1 racing. Because in a fatal crash, it can save you because it keeps you in the car secure. I'm pretty sure it's now mandated on all F1 cars because of its safety improvements, but GTA still has not caught up with the times and lacks the halo. The Turismo Classic has a pretty unique exhaust setup where the exhaust is routed above the bumper and not below it with traditional cars. The Cheetah Classic has zero badging on the outside to call it a Cheetah Classic. However, I have a theory for this. It is called only the Cheetah badged on the outside at least as a Cheetah because as far as Rockstar is concerned, as far as the universe of GTA Online is concerned, this is still a Cheetah but it's just an older Cheetah. It's like in real life if they were to call it a Murcielago classic or something. That's not the case. They just make a newer one and the older one becomes the classic and enthusiast size. But it is still strange in GTA Online. The GP1 has hood catches in the front, but the engine is in the back. So why would it need hood catches in the front where the engine is not being pressured against the hood? There used to be a glitch when the Sterling GT was converted to be a HSW car to have bulletproof windows. This made it a very good car for grinding because it was insanely fast on the freeway and had bulletproof windows and that's really all you need in grinding missions. NPCs rarely shoot rockets at you so you don't really need any rocket protection and it was a pretty nice car to have but unfortunately it's a bygone era, it has now been patched. On the post loop, the trim color also changes the brake calibers as well as the interior if you're wanting to match the interior to your brake calibers for some reason. The Blista Compact's description on Southern San Andreas claims it has a V6. However, if we pop the hood, we can see that it is actually an inline 4.
The Stratum will randomly spawn if you find it on the street or if you buy it with different variations on it. And the maximum amount of variations you can get is 6. It is incredibly rare to get a Stratum with all 6 variations on it. Some of these variations are a Spoiler, a Whip, and a Sunroof. And to see one with all 6 is an incredibly rare sighting. The club has a German word on the back of it that directly translates to burger vehicle. The Penetrator is based on the Jaguar XJ220, which initially was supposed to have a V12 and it ended up having a V6 in real life. However, GTA retained the V12, which is pretty cool to see. Whoever worked on this car definitely knew their stuff, or maybe it was just a stroke of luck that they put a V12 in a car that was initially supposed to have a V12. The Tropos Rally has an engine that seems to be mounted crooked. I'm not sure if this is intentional or a mistake or whatnot just to make it fit into the car, but it is strange to see nonetheless. The Asbo is based on a pretty basic European car that looks like it would probably cost around $2,000. However, you could put a pretty high-end stereo in the back, which probably would cost more than the car. Most cars that have carbon fiber hoods actually are not carbon fiber hoods 100%, they are just carbon fiber wrapped hoods. The Glendale is based on an old Mercedes S-Class which is a prestige car and you know a pretty good car for the time period but it has a random strip of carbon fiber on the dashboard for some reason. They were not utilizing carbon fiber in interiors back in these times, so why is it on a car that is from this time period? I'm not sure. Rockstar Logic, I guess. Now this one's really more of an opinion than a fact, but the Mamba has probably the best sounding startup in the game. Take a listen. I don't know much about lowriders, but doesn't it seem kind of impractical to use 9 car batteries to power the hydraulic system? Seems a bit pricey and frankly quite environmentally unconscious, so it's a pretty strange thing to do. The Monroe has a spare tire, but it's not the same wheel that comes stock on the car. Here I equipped the stock wheels and now it's popped the hood to see. The Stinger has a pretty wide hood on the back that takes up most of the car, and a lot of cars in GTA Online have this as well. However, when you pop it off, it creates a pretty crazy looking car design that you can do to most of these. As I was trying to gather facts about cars for this video, I was looking for truck facts, so I went to my truck garage, and then I, it dawned on me. Maybe it's placebo or whatnot, but there is no category for trucks. There is off-road, there is utility, but there is no category for trucks. And some, matter of fact, are actually in the vans category, which just makes no sense. The Viserys has an engine that is directly exposed to the interior of the car, which can be good for your lungs. This car, the Moonbeam, which is a van, is technically classified as a muscle car, but it can do wheelies. This thing that probably weighs around three tons can do a wheelie.
The Anis brand in GTA Online and in GTA 5 has a similar looking logo to an old Mazda logo. Mazda went through many iterations of logos and they ended up sticking with one and that is the one that we have today. Coquette, which is based on Corvette in GTA Online, seems to be under its own brand, when in reality it should be a Declasse, which is a Chevrolet. This is funny because in real life, GM desperately wants the Corvette to be its own brand. They are coming out with a line of Corvette cars, I believe, or it's speculated or rumored, something like that. But they want Corvette to be as far from Chevrolet as possible. And in GTA Online, they actually followed in these footsteps, which is quite funny. The RT3000 has an option to take the roof off. If you use the convertible with this option, it will roll down the window. So technically, it's the only car in GTA Online to have the ability to roll down the windows, which is pretty cool. The S95's engine looks very similar to the real-life Toyota 86, Subaru BRZ, Boxer Ford that they ended up using. When you hit a car with a baseball bat, it rocks the car pretty violently and you could obviously tell by looking at it from a side angle. I'm not sure if hitting a car with a baseball bat in real life would rock it forward like this, but it's quite funny to see. The agency has two visitor parking spaces that no matter what are never taken. The Ignis has an engine as most cars do, but the weaponized Ignis does not have an engine because the turret goes where the engine would be and we know this by going to Rockstar Editor and checking underneath the turret in the weaponized Ignis, there is no engine whatsoever, the weapon completely replaces it. Newer players of GTA Online may not know this, but the website Southern San Andreas and Legendary Autos actually had unique backgrounds for each car back in the old days. I actually really prefer these backgrounds instead of the boring plain white background we have on Legendary and the boring storage unit background we have on Southern San Andreas. The old backgrounds had a lot more character and I personally would like them back. This method though is probably unsustainable for Rockstar because they can't get a unique location for every car. They release so many cars to get a unique location each time would be crazy. They probably could, but they're too lazy to do that, of course. So we're stuck with what we have. The Cyclone 2 is probably the laziest renaming of a car I've ever seen. They literally just took the Cyclone and added in Roman numerals 2 to the end of it. Can you get any lazier than that? This one is more of a tip, but when you're making trim colors, the interior color of your car, don't just make it white every time. Every time I see the interior of a car colored white, it's just like, be more creative than that. This car is green here and it has a cream pearlescence. So I feel like to blend it better, I chose a tan interior and I really do think it looks great. Once again, not really a fact, but please be creative with your cars. Don't just choose white or black in your interior every time. The Comet S2 probably has the tiniest back seats I've ever seen in my life. Funnily enough, automakers in real life actually do this to their cars. They'll make tiny back seats that no person could reasonably fit in, and people claim it's for different reasons and whatnot, but I think it's just because they want to claim it has back seats, and even though they're impractical, they are still there. The Comet S2 also has a tire monitor, but it does not move, it does not function whatsoever, it's just kind of static there. I do think it's pretty cool just looking at it, but to actually implement a feature to have actual tire monitoring in the game will be quite, I mean, non-important for Rockstar. They have much better things to do than a tire monitor, but it would be cool to see nonetheless.
The Tailgater S is based off of the Audi RS3 in real life, and the Audi RS3 has a 5-cylinder that is known to make crazy power, it's absolutely awesome, but in GTA Online, it has a V8, which would have been cool to see in the real life version, but I don't know, I just feel like me personally, the 5-cylinder just fits the RS3 so perfectly, I'm glad we got the 5-cylinder and not just a 4-cylinder or something, but it is what it is, GTA Online has a V8. You can skip the small cutscene of Los Angeles Customs every time you enter by bringing up your pause menu while you're driving in. You can stand in the Guardian's truck bed and not fall off. If I'm not mistaken, this is one of the only trucks in the game that you can do this with. Also, shout out to this fan who helped me out on Xbox. His name is L16. He told me to call him this random guy or whatever, but his name is L16. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the help from my fans. The Click Wagon is a two-door wagon, technically a three-door because it has a trunk, if you want to count that or whatever, but it is under the four-door category, which is quite strange because it only has two doors. A hot topic in my last video was the reasoning why Rockstar has backwards liveries on some cars. People claim that it is because in Japan, Rockstar, I mean not Rockstar, people in real life would have their liveries backwards on one side and that's just how Japanese culture is. But that could be the case, but honestly, I think Rockstar is just lazy and forgot to flip it on some cars because I believe I've seen it on an American car as well. I forgot which one it was, but yeah, you could be completely right, but honestly, I think it's because Rockstar is just lazy, but whoever said that in the last video, good catch. When you shift from passenger to driver in some cars with a stick shift or even an automatic that sticks up pretty high, you do a pretty uncomfortable thing. I'm not sure I'd want to do this in real life, but I mean, whatever you gotta do, I guess. This one's more of a personal fact, but I have spent over $1.5 billion on cars. I'm not even sure how that's possible. I'm pretty sure all the cars in GTA Online don't even amount to $1.5 billion. Um, so it's quite strange, but I guess I got it somehow. All legit too, for the most part. And that is it everyone, 100 interesting car facts. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you watched the first video and the second video. If not, make sure to go back and watch those. You already watched this one, may as well go back and watch the other two. They have some good facts in there and all the facts in this series are completely unique to the video. I didn't reuse the 50 from the second one, the 20 from the first one. That would have been easier to do, but I wanted 100 unique facts and I did it for you guys. Thank you all for watching. Have a absolutely fantastic day and goodbye.